a day to celebrate Hey everybody, Book Beach Pro staff here of the World of Bird coming to you. You know, deer season's winding up. It's getting ready to come to a close here. You know, we hope you've had a successful deer season. Uh, I myself, I've tagged out on bucks. So now the focus is starting to go from the fall to the spring. You know, turkey hunting is also a, a time of the year that I love to partake in. Uh, I love to spring gobble hunt. It's just, you know, deer hunting is, is great, but turkey hunting is great too because you're more in, in touch with the bird. Uh, you know, sitting in the whitetail woods is you, you're waiting for action to come. I mean, of course, you can grunt them in and, you know, the action's packed there. But spring turkey is on a whole different level. You know, as a longtime turkey hunter myself, to hear, you know, when I was a young child and heard my first tom bird come in, start drumming and spitting and, and purring real close and the bring that white head up through the woods, you know, and for me to get the shot, it was, it, it, it was just like, on from there, you know, you, when you go fishing, you set the hook. Well, the hook was set me when I was a small child. So I've used a lot of turkey calls over the years. Every, every call that they've made, I've used. I've used mouth calls, pot calls, box calls, even wing bone calls. You know, I've been fortunate enough over the years to learn from some great guys. And so, you know, when, when buck baits come and we, we come together, so what can we do? And I said, let's get after the, uh, the spring gobbler business, you know. Let's make a call. Let's not just put any call out there. Let's make a good call, a handmade call, not a mass-produced call. So we come out with a hand-tuned pot call. I call it a pot call. A lot of people call it a slate call. But this is our Buckbaits Game Day Slate Turkey Call. Okay, it's now available. Each, each call is handmade. So when you get a call from us, you're, you're not getting just a, a run-of-the-mill turkey call. You're getting a handmade call. All right. So what, you know, if, and over the years, I've used some mass-produced calls. I've used some hand-tuned calls. I've even used some high-dollar turkey calls. You know, those turkey calls can get up to $100, $150, for handmade calls. Well, here we have the same quality of a handmade high-end call right here in this little package. So when you get a turkey call from us, you'll get this pack here. It comes in a clamshell pack. All right, so when you get it, you'll open it up and you'll see that you have a call. You have the call itself here. You have a two-tone maple striker. And you also come with this little pack right here. In this pack is an abrasive surface for you to clean the slate call. So, you know, I've been turkey hunting a long time and I know there's a lot of you out there who have not been turkey hunting a long time. So what I want to do today is explain to you, first off, how to use this pad. So when you get this pad, you know, a lot of turkey calls on the market don't come with this pad. So you don't know what you need to do to condition your surface. So wh what do I mean by condition surface? Okay, when you use a slate call, after many times, the call sound will dampen and will go downhill because you're working that slate. So what this pad here for, is for you to, to, it's almost like a fresh start. So you take this pad here and you go the opposite way of what you're gonna call. All right, so you see how I'm taking the call horizontal here. The reason why I do that is because I call vertical. So I need to make sure that my striker, this is a striker, when it hits this call, it makes the most clearest and purest sound that it can make. Okay, that is crucial in turkey hunting. You know. It, Every call, your calling may not sound like my calling. That's okay, because every hen turkey in the woods does not sound like the same turkey. Every hen turkey doesn't sound exactly the same. So your calling, my calling could be different. But what we've done is we've done a lot of research, and we've, got, we've, we've come up with a call here that will sound like the most realistic hen turkey in the woods or in the field or in the rolling timbers or if you're in the hardwood oak flats like I am here in Virginia, that you will have a call that will sound just like a hen turkey. So what I'm gonna to do today for you is I'm gonna demonstrate this call for you. All right, I want you to say how much of a turkey this sounds like. This call will compete with the higher end, high price point turkey calls. 
at a lower end price point. Handmade call. I cannot stress that enough. This is not going down an assembly line making 42,000 jerky calls at one time. Each call that you get from us is hand tuned, hand made. So back to this. We've got our pot call. We've got our select call. We've got our striker. Okay. You know, you hold a pencil in your hand like this. So to feel comfortable using the striker, you hold just like you do a pencil. So what you do is you take your call. Now we've sanded horizontally. So we're going to call vertically. So what we're going to do, the first call we're going to do here, this is a cluck. All right, so cluck is when a hen turkey is looking for a gobbler. All right, so the gobbler, in the real world turkey, the gobbler gobbles, the hen goes to the gobbler. Okay, but we're, we are mocking a hen turkey, and we want the gobbler to come to us. Okay, eventually, if we keep calling after he's answering, he's going to get frustrated and come in and say, why is this hen turkey not coming in? So when the gobbler gets close, you'll hear him gobble, and he, as he gobbles, he'll get closer to you. So you've got to sit still. But when you're making a call and he gets close, you just make one cluck. You make a series of clucks. All right. When you make a couple fast series of clucks like that, it's kind of like a cackle. So what you, what I like to do is make one little cluck. If I'm trying to locate, so if I blow the crow call or I blow the hoot owl call early in the morning and he gobbles. And I'm moving to him walking out through a ridge. This is run and gun turkey hunting. I like to run and gun turkey hunting. A lot of people like to sit in fields and call them in. That's one way to do it. So if you have a lot of hills and a lot of fields out where you hunt, this will work for you just as well. But as a run and gun turkey hunter like myself, I like to make one cluck. And then I'll follow with another cluck. And then if he doesn't gobble by then, I'll just start with a yelp. See how I'm doing that? You go in a small circle. You don't want to go too fast. You want to go real slow. And you'll hear that raspy. Yuck, 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 yuck. That's how you make a yell. So you just make small circles. To make a cluck, you go real fast down. Notice how I'm getting lower to the middle of the call? If you want a high pitch cluck, it's right here at the top. If you're at the top of the call, that makes the sound go a long ways. So the pitch is really high. It makes it carry a long ways. All right, so we've got our cluck. We've made our clucks here. And over time, you'll get used to the flow of how it works. Just get comfortable. Practice, practice, practice. So when you're working there and you make that and you hear him gobble and you want to get him excited again, you make a little yelp. So when you make a yelp, you take the striker, hold it over a little bit, and just... That's called a yelp. That's telling the gobbler, hey, I'm a hen, I'm here, I'm ready to breed, so come to me. Okay, so most of the time when you make that yelp, you get about to the third circle, he'll answer you. He'll, he'll cut you off. So if you hear the turkey gobble and he cuts you off, then you just, once you hear the gobble, you want to make a little cackle. That shows an excitement of a hen. So what I'm doing there... I'm taking that striker and I'm going kind of I'm cutting and cackling all at the same time so I'm, I'm, I'm making a cackle and I'm moving my striker see I'm, it's not quite a yelp it's kind of a cackle so he hears that and he'll gobble all right and you can tell while you why, where he's gobbling and how far he's gobbling and how long he's gobbling whether he's getting closer if he hangs up or a hen cuts you off, you're going to have to move closer to him. Okay? If if he's by himself, he'll double and triple gobble. Double and triple gobble means he'll gobble, gobble, and then gobble. If you hear a double gobble, he's a hot bird. I like to call them two-year-old birds are the easiest, the first long-bearded gobblers. A Jake is a one-year-old turkey, and a long beard turns into a two- and three-year-old turkey. Two- and three-year-old turkeys are the easiest turkeys to kill. Most of the time they're in groups, you can call them in. But you cuff. You hear the gobble. All right. If he's closer, just sit down. When he gets close, you hear him start spitting and drumming. Spitting is when he flaps his fan out and you hear him go. That's when he's walking through and he's dragging his feathers on the ground. 
Okay, he's spitting and drumming. He's getting excited. When you hear the spitting and drumming, you're, he's in your wheelhouse. So when he's in your wheelhouse and he's close, you kind of want to purr. When you purr, you just drag it. That's a purr. When a purr means I'm getting excited, I know you're close, come in a little closer. When you purr, when you're close enough to purr and you hear him spitting and drumming, if you hear him gobble and you hear that raspiness on, on his crawl, you'll hear it once you get him close enough. You'll hear that. You can tell when he's close because it'll almost knock your socks off your feet. So when he gets close enough, you want to put the calling down and get the shotgun up and get ready to go. If you like the shotgun hunt with turkeys, wonderful. Crossbow hunt, same thing. If you're a rifle hunt and it's legal in your state, go for it. But I like to draw them close. I don't like to take shots farther than 20 yards. But So what I like to do is when I'm walking a ridge, I'll make one little cut like that. And then if I don't hear nothing, I'll cut, 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 and then yuck. And cut at the end. It's took me a long time to figure that out. I've worked a lot of turkeys how to figure that out. But for a be if if you're a beginning turkey hunter, patience, 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 practice, practice. Uh, it takes a lot of experience. I mean, I've been doing this for 16 years now, and over the years, I've learned. You know, I've been an avid, hardcore turkey hunter since I was 13 years old. So over the years, I've learned some things. Turkeys will teach you. That's what I've always told myself. Turkeys will teach you. Listen to the turkeys. If you're in the woods fall, if you're in the fall deer hunting and you hear turkeys, listen to them. If you if you are in the spring, listen. If you mess up, it's okay. You'll learn from it. Patience makes practice and patience makes us better. Don't ever forget that. But what I like to do, like I said, is I, once I'm yelping, if he's answering me, now if he's a long ways away, you want to raspy it. When I say raspy, it means <laughs> means you want to be louder you want the sound to go farther but if he's close to you you do not want the sound to go far off because he'll think that you're closer than you actually are so if he's far away I like to make the rasp but if he's really close 100 150 yards I like to back it up a little bit and move to the middle of the call and I'm not putting as much pressure on the call as I am if he's far away so on a good day he'll gobble on the roost you'll hear him you know where he is, you set up close, you make a, make one little series of clucks, he'll gobble. If he's on the ground, he'll fly to you. One little soft yuck. Make one little series. Yep, yep, cut, yep, yep, cut. He answers you, he comes in, he gets close enough, he's working through the turret, he's working through the woods. You see a little white snowball head. Now if he comes in, his head can be red, white, or blue. Just like America. If his head's red, white, or blue, hey, it's all up to you. So white head, make him dead. That's what I've always told myself. When you see the snowball head coming through the woods and you and you haven't got quite a good shot on him, start purring. Now, when you get purr, it's time to put the call down and get ready to go. Now, a little trick I've learned over the years hunting with a couple guys. If there's two turkeys, and the first one gets killed and you're calling and the shotgun goes off and you drop one turkey and he starts flopping and there's another turkey and you want to get another shot to switch gun so you start you, you start cutting at it and nine times out of ten that second gobbler will circle around come back and start flogging on the turkey that has just been shot and you can get two birds at one time so these turkey calls are wonderful. They're beautiful. Like I said, they're handmade. The glass bedded slate calls. They're pretty, but the pretty part of them is how they operate in the spring. In the turkey woods, these calls are the go-to. So I hope these little this little video here has helped you out a little bit on how to use turkey calls. Uh, if you have any questions, email us through uh, social media or send us an email. Contact us on social media and. Uh, Come in and gobble up your turkey call. You know, Christmas time is coming. Get one for that loved one for you. Put in the stock and the wrap as a gift for that wonderful hunter.
100 man, 100 woman in your life. So as always, hey, I'm the Worldly Bird. Thanks for all your support and all your business. We appreciate every one of you. Visit us on social media outlet. Get you a turkey call, and you'll be having that turkey on the pole before too long. So good luck to you this spring. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Enjoy the time with your friends and family. And hey, appreciate them. Because we're only on this earth for a little while. So thanks for watching. God bless America. God bless you. And thank you for everything.